This is John Frizzell, and uh, we're in my studio today, and we're talking about uh, Dynaudio Air Series uh, monitors. Yeah, I've been composing for film and television for about 20 years. Um, I started out in New York uh, early on working with a Synclavier. I moved out here about 20 years ago, actually, almost exactly 20 years ago. I co-composed a couple scores with James Newton Howard, who helped me get my career going, and um, went on scoring and got my own gigs on my own after that. Um, and uh, have been doing that for quite some time. So the, the projects I'm working at right now are, um, one is The Following, it's on Fox, starring Kevin Bacon and executive producer Kevin Williamson. I have a film coming out called The Loft that Joel Silver produced and Universal is releasing. And then I'm producing an EP uh, with a new artist named Haddon Cord and working with T-Bone Burnett on that. Okay, so uh, we see here uh, we're sti sitting in one of your uh, Dyn Audio studios here, or custom studios, and um, how long have you been using uh, Dyn Audio um, speakers? Seven years about. I think that's about the length of time that this room has been uh, running. Um, and the, r two, the two main rooms here were built with the air uh, monitors picked out in advance of construction. So we had the uh, opportunity of, of getting the spaces exactly right for them and, and building in their placement. Okay, uh, so you, you actually have two rooms. What is this room used for mostly, and what is the second room used, which is a smaller room on the other side? There? Yeah, the smaller room is really just a downsized version of this, and it has the, the tens in it, right? Yeah, the t air tens in it. And then this has the 25s in it, although this has 10s for the surrounds. Yes. Um, and so the idea that we wanted was to be able to interchange and go back and forth between these two rooms and to not, and to have them sound almost identical. Obviously, they have a smaller sweet spot, um, but to keep them very consistent so that if you needed to work in the lower room, you could just run over there and do that. You could continue mixing while you're writing in the other room, and that it would be almost completely interchangeable. L let's talk about this room, uh, this particular room that looks uh, very nice here. Uh, can you describe, you know, uh, what uh, kind of work was done? Is uh, Who actually uh, designed the acoustics here? Jack Vieira designed this room, who's done some amazing studios in the Los Angeles area. Uh, one of the, I think, primary features is that this front wall, um, although the floor isn't floated, that front wall is floated. Um, and that gave us a lot of isolation, uh, especially between this and the live room out here, um, because we didn't have enough room to, we didn't want to float the floor for a cost reason and just for height and a lot of other things. Um, but that worked, ended up working quite well. We can. Um, monitor at considerable volume in here and not get any bleed. We do have two glass doors, which does help there. Um, placement of the 25s was, was really important. And we, I think you guys came out and helped us with that, which was really great to be able to get the tweeters perfectly aligned. We did flip over the center to keep the tweeters at a consistent yep. level, which I think uh, in, a, in a closer setting like this was, was important. Um, and then you have the added feature of the center monitor, which, which is on a motor, and it has to slide in for the large screen to come down. There's a projector back here. Yeah, that was, a, it was a, quite a little feat of uh, engineering to get that to work consistently. But it's never not worked, I should knock on wood. Um, the, there's one sub mm -hmm. down behind that cello over there. Um, we s put two subs in in the beginning, and we just didn't need them. It was just wasn't it, the room was just completely filling up. Uh, the room behind us here, there is quite an extensive base trap on the back door, about two feet, um, and then you ha also have uh, a lot of uh, reflections are stopped on this wall and dispersion as well. And these glass doors, it's so nice to have sunlight, but if you really want a perfect uh, m monitoring environment, those do slide shut and it does mirror the exact wall. So uh, you've been using these, um, this particular setup here for uh, a number of years, maybe six or seven mm -hmm. years now or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, seen a lot of other rooms and all of uh, other equipment. Why uh, do you keep on using these particular Dynaudio uh, setups? Is there a particular reason for that? Well, I really like um, that I don't, I don't get surprised um, going between stages. And if I finish a score here, 
and um, we, you know, with Joel Silver, we've worked a lot at Warner Brothers, and I can go over to the stages there, and I know um, that what I'm hearing over here, I'm going to get over there. No and surprises. Everything is pretty much a duplication of different rooms, same sound, same. Um, yeah, I, there's. I mean, I think it seems like every stage has a different level when you get to the surrounds. So we never try to get that exactly right. We're going to have to deal with that. But but our LCR stays really true and constant, and we can count on our imaging being really good. And over time as well, because as you know, uh, uh, it's been said that our dyno duo drivers age very well. Yeah, they, they've done really well. I mean, we've had, to, I think the only thing we've done is replace the power supplies, which you helped with. Um, um, they have, what, a life of about six or seven years, something like that. So, um, but we leave them on 24-7, and they, and they get worked out a lot in here. Um, the, um, I also really like going into them digitally. Um, I don't have to think about my amplifiers. Obviously, I don't have to think about D to A conversion. And having them, everything clocked together and not wondering, am I matching the right um, D to A and having that happen right at the last second gives me a, a sense of security and consistency um, that is is very valuable yeah, to me. Consistency is a word that comes back quite often, you know, when talking about air series anyway. So um. Yeah, yeah, it's extremely consistent. Um, and the fact that we are able to match two rooms with different size monitors and have them um, where I can, I know if I go out right in that room, I don't have to come to the other room and hear it and vice versa. Do you think that there are special projects in your work that uh, you can do with the airs and you wouldn't be able to do with the other uh, line of monitors? Um? I don't know if that's the case. Uh, I think that there, uh, uh, they do provide what I another feature that I really like. I don't know if it's a feature, but another aspect is that um, I can work a lot of hours, and there's a there isn't an uh, overly hyped the way I have them tuned in this room is it doesn't hype the high end to the point of sort of where I get ear fatigue um, early. I mean, I do get ear, you know, you get tired, but I can work for long periods of time. It, it seems it is a, is a nice balance. The fatigue factor seems to be uh, very favorable on these particular uh, drivers. Yeah, yeah I don't f you don't feel them working so hard. Yeah. How can you really describe, I would say, if you, if you were to describe the sonic qualities of these speakers or the characteristic, mm -hmm. the sonic characteristic, mm -hmm. what would you say? I would say they're very clear um, and they're very well balanced. I, it doesn't seem to be um, an enormous amount of coloration. Uh, um, I think as you move between frequencies, it, it just seems to be that they all come from the same ilk and they're not st overly stamping what's being done with their own perspective. I also really love getting, you know, having a, a lot of speakers have a system like this now, but I think these were pretty early on to have um, this much control uh, off your center monitor or off of, if you're just working stereo off either one, um, to me is a big advantage um, to keep that controlled, uh, to keep this much control within the line of your monitors or your volume, your, your, um, your D to A. Um, your amplification is all sort of one idea. I like I like having that group together. The reason I went with the Air series is because it was the first system that really felt like a system. It didn't feel like um, getting the this monitor and this monitor and this monitor and these six monitors and putting them in the room. It felt like a unit that that became part of the room. Uh, let's go see the other room. Let's go see uh, what we call Studio B, the small room with the Air tents. So we're gonna bring the camera crew on in, and look at the uh, and look at this room. This room kind of gets jam packed at times. You can see I've got my uh, Harpa G over here and my Swarmatron, and a rack of crazy stuff there, and um, good old guitar vial over here that I love to use. Um, but so you have a, a, a real micro setting with a really a single person 5.1 space here. Um, it. it completely uh, works in a space about the size of a human head. Right. Um, this room does get used as a live room, but I like to write in this room a lot. It tends to be my favorite environment. It's, um, 
I can work at a lower volume for a long period of time and, and really hear everything with the, with the low noise floor and um, something about just the intimate space that makes long writing sessions work for me.